Good morning, everybody. It is Terrific Tuesday, or Tired Tuesday, after a Monday with that wild, wild young man, Riker John Martin. We had so much fun to, yesterday, but I realized quickly, time flies by. Riker is almost two years old, and I took a picture of him laying on the floor, and there was this long body laying there, and I'm like, He's this long, big person now. And then I realize life really does fly by and it just passes us by so quickly. I was talking to Hans and I said, you've got to do something for me. You've got to make that lobster salad for me again. And he said, okay, we will soon. And we started talking about survivorship and, and, and living and, and how do you look back? It was 15 years ago that I sat at his table with his wife and we basically were planning how will we deal with his funeral because the doctors were giving him very little chance to come home. How will we deal with the loss of her husband and the children's father? How will we deal with all that? Well, the good Lord stepped in and we didn't have to deal with that. Hans is being honored as a 15 year survivor of cancer, cancer free now. You think about that. If you see him, a lot of people who don't know his story think, oh, that man must be sick. Well, that man was very sick and they took all the sick out of him and now he's just very thin. I wish they'd take some of the sick out of me and I'd be very thin, but he's thin for a reason. He has no stomach, no esophagus. He has a very hard time getting to eat much of the great food that he cooks but he is such a strong survivor. And so today we're gonna to honor him. When we were, he and I were talking about it and I told him what I had chosen to do, it's his birthday and it is the honoring of 15 years cancer free. How many people get to say, I had the worst cancer ever, the doctors gave me less than 1% to survive, nobody told me how bad it was, I just felt it was bad, we all just felt this is gonna be the end of this young man's life. This young man's life has just been a roller coaster, up and down and trying to do and, and working in so much pain and doing all the things he did. And then the hardest thing ever was to see the Woodbridge Inn shut down. He and I went out there and we took some pictures. We recreated a scene from over 40 years ago because on Mother's Day, I was standing in front of that well curb and there was a picture made of me. And then I got Hans out there and I took a picture of Hans and he was a little boy. I have those two pictures and I'm gonna share them. We're gonna do a DVD of Woodbridge Inn Memories. And we're gonna put that out and, you know, just the cool things that happened at the Woodbridge Inn. I hope that one day he will write a book. I hope that one day he will tell the whole story of everything that went on from the time he was a little boy and they would scream upstairs and say, come downstairs and help, we're getting really, really busy. What an amazing life, what an amazing legacy. And his dad started that with hard, hard work ethics. That man worked beyond and um, Hans learned from the best. So when you see him walking the streets or riding his bicycle in Jasper, this is a true survivor. He is one of those guys, when I look at Riker and I think Hans was only two years older than that when I first met him. He was four years old when I first met this kid. He has been um, amazing to me on, on many avenues. I mean, when I saw him on the Food Network, I was like his biggest fan ever. We had every phone in our office programmed to continually call in and vote for him. We had like nine phones and we had them set on a system that we would vote for him all day long. We were determined that he was gonna win the Food Network. Well, as, as luck or life would have it, he didn't win, but he was in like third place and then very shortly after diagnosed with cancer. Look at where he has come today, 15 years later. 15 years later, he is talking to people. He is encouraging people. He is cooking healthy for other people. He is teaching us to, to think more of ourselves and to eat healthier and, and to feel better. And so y'all know the recipe, one of the recipes that he did for me is in our opening shots. And I'm gonna tell you something. I've eaten a lot of food in a lot of restaurants that lobster salad was probably the best thing I ever put in my mouth. It was so yummy and it was so simple, but it was so fresh and it was so good. So we're gonna share a little bit of Hans with you today. We did a tribute to him up at, um, in Fannin County. I think this was like 10, nine, 10 years ago. 
and we're going to share that with you <coughs> in this. I think you will see Jen and I and possibly Angela's on here. But when we think about how fast that time has gone, here it is. He's a 15-year cancer survivor. He is approaching a birthday that nobody thought he would see, and he is still living life to the fullest. He tickles me to death. He rides that bicycle. He gets out. He is still farming in a mini way. He farms all his veggies and all his um, herbs, and, and he uses them to cook, and he just doesn't give up. And I think that's what I love about him. He kind of taught me, he, he was pretty angry with Angela when she did what she did because they were both cancer survivors. And she sadly ended her life. And I think that it was very hard for him because he was fighting to live. And she sadly emotionally could not handle what she was going through. So it was a tough time. We had a, we had a period there that he was very quiet and I was very depressed. There was just something going on with both of us because he was angry with her and I was depressed and um, I've come through that he has come through the things that he was feeling and we know now that every single moment of life has to be lived enjoyed and man just you're so blessed if you get that extra moment if you get that extra day and saying that somebody was kind of talking about mask on um, Facebook this morning and I joined in on the conversation I choose not to wear a mask, but I have a bunch of masks that I got today from a precious, precious lady that I love. Miss Becky brought them to me this morning, and this one I might say would fit Joe Kelly McCutcheon because it says Georgia Tech, but these are going down to our ball ground office because my broker loves these little masks and she wanted some more of them. If you choose to wear a mask, good for you. You know, I choose to keep my distance from people. And that's, you know, distancing here, this is as far as we can get, and it's about four feet. But we try to do it. I try, I sanitize everything. I wipe down everything, but I can't wear a mask. My allergies are so bad, and I'm always, I just, I'm stuffy. And so I can't wear a mask because it absolutely, it makes me quit breathing. I cannot do it. I don't know how the nurses do it. I applaud them. I don't know how the doctors do it. God bless them, God bless them. But if you wear a mask, that is up to you. I think it's great if you're in that high risk and you want to do it. I just choose to keep my distance. And so I wipe everything down. If somebody gets my phone, then I wipe it down. When I get it back, you know, I'm just trying to be really, really cautious. You live your life to the fullest in a way that works for you. And, and that's what I'm trying to do. So, so for those people, I don't wear a mask. Um, I've worn one twice, didn't like it, couldn't breathe, it didn't last long. I, w I was absolutely, I felt like I was going to hyperventilate. So, can't do it. And if they mandate it, then it means I'll be at home and I won't be out anywhere because I can't do that. But anyway, um, if you're looking for masks, Becky is on Facebook and I'll post her information. She'll make more. These are really, really cute. I love the happy colors. And um, then the guys' colors. We laughed because we have some guys in our office and the dark colors I think are cute on the guys. But, and the country colors. This is kind of like country. That would be me. I might be a little bit country. I might be a little bit city-fied sometimes. Just depends on what mood I'm in. But today we are honoring my friend Hans Ruford. I also have a very, very special prayer request right now. My friend Tim Logan is at the Fuqua Heart Center down in Piedmont, Atlanta. They are telling him oh, well, we saw this, and we saw this, and we saw this, and we don't know where we're going yet. I don't know what the outcome's going to be. But I know that there's a possibility that he will be facing some surgery, and we are just going to pray him through this. So please, everybody in Jasper knows Tim and Leah. Please pray for them. Pray for Leanne. Pray for the family. Pray that everything today comes out. We can fix this, smooth as silk. Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. We also have a tribute for a very, very, very special man. Um, being in the trucking business, you know, you know guys who drive this and this and this and this. And um, we were lucky enough to have got to be a part of seeing Charlie Daniels on the road. We were lucky enough to have been a part of seeing how Charlie Daniels treated people. We were lucky enough to enjoy and love his music. And I know that Jim Fields drove for him for many, many years, and, and I just, I feel so bad for him today because Charlie Daniels went to be with the Lord yesterday. He was only 83. 83 to me is getting younger. He sadly is gone, but the music will live on forever. And we want to show just a picture of something instead of flowers for his service. 
they have asked that you donate to something that is very, very special and close to his heart. This week, we are doing, we are honoring our military. Tomorrow, we're going to be honoring military. Thursday, we're going to be honoring military. Charlie Daniels has a project. And again, Cole, can you put that back up so people can, if y'all will Google this, it's the Journey Home Project. If you will Google this, if you have ever loved his music, if you'll send $5, $10, whatever you can send to the Journey Home Project, that will make a difference in a, a soldier's life who is coming home having to adjust so possibly some differences that happened. Maybe they were injured while they were at war. Maybe things happened that mentally really were tough for them. But again, this is Charlie Daniels. It's, it's a project that he started because his heart is certainly in the military, the Journey Home Project. So if you loved his music, just send, you know, make a donation. If you thought about sending flowers, don't do that. They don't want flowers. They want the Journey Home Project to once again be something very, very special. And what a great tribute to pay to this amazing, amazing man. He was kind beyond. He gave time to children. He just, he was a good, good guy. So today we honor Charlie Daniels. And yeah, the devil went down to Georgia one day. Sure did. I usually run into the devil. So we're going to go to our commercial break. And then when we come back, we're going to be sharing a very special program. This was Heart of the Home, uh, produced by Fred Wyndham. We did this up in Fannin County. And we were honoring our friend Hans Rufert. And Jen reads the proclamation from the state of Georgia. He was, at this point in time, getting through the cancer. Hadn't been declared cancer-free. Had written his cookbook. Some things were happening. He had come in from the Food Network. Everything was going great. And then, wow, he got that diagnosis. We don't know what the next step is with us. We don't know who the next person we know is that's gonna get that diagnosis. We can say that we need to be prepared. And yesterday I talked a little bit about how very, very important it is to have a power of attorney, to have a health directive. We don't know when we're gonna get hit by a freight train. We don't know when we're gonna pass out getting in our car. We don't know what the next step is, but we need to be prepared. And if you haven't done that, um, you need to be prepared because the story I was sharing with y'all yesterday, they're still dealing with this with a gentleman who had a stroke, is in the hospital, and the wrong person is taking care of things and making decisions that could end his life. And that is very scary because he didn't take care of things and didn't get things in place. So don't be scared. Be smart and get things in order. Do your health directive. Do your power of attorney. And you know that a power of attorney ends at the end of your life. But while you're, if you're laying there on a ventilator, let somebody who loves you and is concerned for you make those decisions. Don't just let Joe Blow off the street make the decision to end your life. So, so it's very important. And you know, when we look at this, Hans was a young man when he came out of the doctor's office and they gave him this diagnosis of this horrible cancer. He wasn't ready for this. He didn't have a bunch of life insurance. He didn't have a health directive. He didn't have any of this stuff because he was a young man. You don't see this coming, but I can tell you, we never know what's coming next. So time to get prepared and time to do what we need to do to take care of ourselves. We're gonna to go to a commercial break and then you're gonna to get to see my buddy, Hans Rufert. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. 
When traveling internationally, know where you're going and what the environment is. Also, don't dress to stick out. Dress to blend in with the environment and the culture. Make sure that you put minimal information on your luggage tags. Airlines actually track your bags, which you can follow through your app anywhere domestically and internationally. Also have a medical plan. We have mobilized rescue system. These systems are the only integrated medical technology that can integrate to your phone and be used abroad and domestically for any medical emergency that you have. If you have any questions or concerns about travel security or training, please contact Hypeman International. High-speed Wi-Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. I've never been so happy Dancing, swinging, laughing at me Smile on my face It's happiness for days Uh-oh You are everything I need Happy ever after will be Couldn't even dream a better Couldn't even dream a better way Is my rival and my buddy. What do we have in common? We both like gospel singing and, and we have a need for speed. We have a true need for speed. Now our need for speed goes back to my love for Dale Earnhardt and your love for Jeff Gordon, but you've got me involved in a new need for speed and it's go-kart racing, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Our children race together and we have learned to spend time in a motor home. His wife and I um, take turns cooking and feeding the kids. And tonight we're gonna to share a recipe with you called Speed Dogs. And it's exactly what it says. It is speedy, it is easy, it's something the adults like, the children like. And we can do this in the motorhome. We have a small oven in the motorhome. So um, simple, simple and easy. We're gonna go over the ingredients and then we're gonna talk about our kids because we're proud of those kids, aren't we? Right. We are, okay. The ingredients are canned biscuits, and I have used three kinds of hot dogs. I used Oscar Mayer, and I used the little sausage, smoky sausage links, and then the Polish sausage too. So, um, and then all kinds of condiments, anything you can think of to go on a hot dog. Sauerkraut, cheese, chili, Annie's famous slaw that we love. And if you don't eat at Annie's restaurant, you've missed some really good slaw. I wonder how much mustard it would take to cover up that 24. <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> I bet I could do that in one shot. <laughs> we're gonna put the hot dogs together now and while they cook, we're gonna talk a little bit about our kids and how proud we are of them. I started with some canned biscuits that I broke in half and then I rolled them with my rolling pin to make them flat and thin. I tried this one time without splitting the biscuits and it was too much bread. So we split the biscuit and we roll it out with a rolling pin and then we just place it in our little mitts. And I'd sprayed my pan with Pam so they won't stick. I think you can do this. I think this is something a man can do. This one has got the little smoky cocktails in it and my granddaughter Ansley loves sauerkraut. So this one I usually dress up with kraut and cheese. And the next pan we're gonna do for the children, which will be very simple, cheese. And then when they're finished, we'll add mustard and ketchup to them or onions or slaw, some of Annie's famous slaw. So all of these are so simple and so easy. And it's the kind of thing, while the kids are out racing on the track and you're prepping tires and doing all the things you do to get them ready, Sherry and I can run in there and whip this out in about 15 minutes. So it's pretty good. Now these we're gonna really do simple. We're gonna do some chili and cheese. Some of the kids like chili, some don't. And it's, you know, these are bite size, so it doesn't take much. Now we've got our oven preheated to 345, and we're gonna stick these bad boys in there. We're gonna cook them a little bit slow. You don't wanna cook them too fast. And very quickly, we'll have dinner for about nine boys. 
Now, Troy, what do you think? This is pretty speedy, wasn't it? Yes, ma'am. Pretty speedy. Is that as fast as we go around the track? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was. We've got them hot out of the oven, and we're going to dress them up. We're going to do the simple ones with mustard and ketchup for the kids who just like the simple things. And do you like onions and slaw on yours? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so how about a chili cheese? We'll do you a suicide. Is that a good one? That's good. Okay, all right. Let's add this. Now, remember, I have to save enough of this to cover that 24. And did you tell me you were going to challenge me to cover my three with that ketchup? I sure did. That ketchup's not big <laughs> enough to cover my number three. <laughs> Okay, Troy, we made it through this. We haven't hurt each other. <laughs> We've actually become better friends, and we shared a recipe. We shared a good time. We love having you come and visit with us. Remember when you show up at the track, root for Earnhardt, right? <laughs> right? Gordon. Gordon Earnhardt. <laughs> Stay tuned, everybody. We'll see you every Thursday night on Heart of the Home. Well, it's... Okay, I had to share that with y'all because I used to love NASCAR. I used to be obsessed with NASCAR. I was like a NASCAR... I, it was my life. I, I, everything was based around race day. And, and who was, you know, Dale Earnhardt Sr. was my favorite forever. I liked Dale Jr., but I never could get into all that stuff. I just, I was his daddy's, I, I loved his daddy. He was the best in racing ever. Actually, I had a sticker made that I put on my mailbox, mailbox that said greatest driver ever, and he truly was. NASCAR and me, I'm not so happy with them now. They're just, you know, they're acting crazy. You know, I like the idea that they started with a prayer. I like the idea that they saluted the flag. I like the idea that they did the Star Spangled Banner. Now they got these people going to get out there and kneel. It just drives me crazy. And as far as Bubba and all that shenanigans about that rope, you know, it was a mistake. It was something that didn't really happen. It wasn't a big deal. But everybody made such a big deal about it. And, and here we go with the Dukes of Hazard. We got Confederate flags. We got people from the South. I'm Southern. I'm Southern with a little Jewish thrown in, a little Russian thrown in, a little French thrown in. I got a little bit of all that stuff thrown in. But I'm a Southern girl. I've never had a Confederate flag in my house, but I'm not going to tell somebody else they can't because the Confederacy was part of history. That's life. It's part of history. So. I disagree with NASCAR. I disagree with everything they're doing. It makes me angry with them. The only time I turned on the race this week was to see where Chase Elliott was. I turned it on for about 10 seconds. Chase was in second place. At the end of the race, he ended up, I think, in 14th. I'm glad I didn't watch it anyway. If he didn't win, so the heck with it. But it annoys me because NASCAR was my life. I loved NASCAR. I'm over it, so done. Okay, here we go. We're gonna share a tribute to my friend Hans Rufert. You know him, you love him. He started here at ETC. Thank the good Lord for him because when things changed for me, he and Hewitt stepped up and said, well, no matter what you named your show on TV, everybody always said Sherry Show. So that's how the Sherry Show was born. Hans and Hewitt decided to develop this and, and there the rest is history. Years and years later, I look back on our friendship and I look back on the days that I thought that my friend would no longer be here. 15 years cancer free, 15 years cancer free. That is amazing. So please um, today sit back. We're gonna watch, this is a tribute and, and thank you to David Ralston for doing this. This was something we did about 10 or 11 years ago. But it pays tribute and, and honors a young man who still smiles regardless of the pain level he's in, regardless of what life has thrown at him. He is an amazing survivor and I think we should all learn from him. The rocker's on the front porch singing a familiar song. The tractor's in the barn and the pastor's freshly mown. Looking through the screen door, the aroma draws you in to the heart of the home where old memories begin. The heart of the home keeps calling you in. Sherry's in the kitchen, cooking with her friends, sharing recipes together, stories and songs, making new memories. The heart of the home. Welcome to Heart of the Home, away from home. We are certainly away from home, but we're actually in my new home, Fannin County. And we're joined by my friend, Hans Rufert, who happens to be a survivor. 
Yep. Um, a survivor in a point that what what happened to you in the last 90 days? Well, the last 90 days, I was basically told that I would uh, wouldn't be here today. Right. And, uh, and I've got a black today in honor of you, but yeah. I don't have my pantyhose <laughs> on, so I'm not having so to not morning. Okay, no, good. No, well, no, good. no, 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 no. It's good to know. Although we, there's always good food at a funeral, so we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have good food. We're gonna today. have some good food today. So. We're at Town and Country Furniture in Fannin County, where this kitchen was designed around you, wasn't it? It really was. Yeah, we we shot about 50 cooking shows actually right here, mm -hmm. and they uh, they changed the countertop out, Incredible raised the hood for me because I'm so tall. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, this was, this was sort of my home away from home kitchen. So. Okay, let's give people a little bit of history. You were the Food Network, the third runner-up. That's right, in 2005, and then two weeks later, diagnosed with stomach cancer. Uh, ended up losing, I didn't lose it, I don't know where it is, it's probably in a jar somewhere, but they removed <laughs> half of my stomach and half of my esophagus, and I lost about 80 pounds in the process. Uh -huh. I um, found it. Oh, okay, <laughs> good. I, I'd like it back now, please. Okay, you um, can have it. And then, uh, and then recently, I was uh, diagnosed with, with brain cancer, essentially, which, uh, and they told me, you know, that would be dead by now right. and luckily it turned out to not be cancer and turned out to be a rare infection so right. uh, we got all that under control and so I'm standing next to you today. You're standing right. next to me and next to you stands a lady mm -hmm. who has something to read about you. This I, is a resolution from the state of Georgia. Now can you read the men's name who are responsible for this Jen? Welcome Jen Roberts. She is my assistant. <laughs> she makes sure I'm in line, in control, on top of things at all times and if you don't mind her she will take you out of here. So. <laughs> Somebody needs to. So. <laughs> I try. Hans, I'm very pleased to be a courier today from the Georgia House of Representatives. And this is particularly from Representative Ralston of the 7th District and Representative Graves of the 12th District. Mm -hmm. So, young man, be it known, a resolution recognizing and commending Mr. Hans Rufert and for other purposes. Whereas, growing up, Mr. Hans Rufert lived with his family above their restaurant the Woodbridge Inn in Jasper, Georgia, and whereas, fascinated with cooking as a child, Mr. Rufert grew up watching culinary masters such as Julia Child, Jacques Pepin, Martin Yan, Graham Carr, and Justin Wilson, and whereas, after years of honing his cooking skills at the family's restaurant, Mr. Rufert was invited to be a guest on a local cooking show, which led to his on show on ETC3 TV called In the Kitchen with Hans, and whereas in 2005, Mr. Rufert was selected from over 10,000 applicants to appear on the Food Network's The Next Food Network Star. He placed third in a competition against eight other chefs from around the country, vying for a spot in the Cooking Network's lineup. And, whereas, shortly after his successful showing, Mr. Rufert was diagnosed with stage three stomach cancer, resulting in the removal of half of his stomach and half of his esophagus. And, whereas, thanks to the healing and skilled hands of the staff at MD Anderson Cancer Hospital in Texas, Mr. Rufert remains cancer-free to this day. And, Whereas, besides hosting his own live audience show on ETC3 TV, Hans Cooks the World, which has earned him three telly awards, Mr. Rufert has recently taped a show for Georgia Public Broadcasting, Hans Cooks the South, slated to air this year. And, whereas, Mr. Rufert is united in love and marriage to his supportive and caring wife, Amy, and they have been blessed with two remarkable children, Finn and Ella. And, Whereas, in his first cookbook, Eat Like There's No Tomorrow, this gifted chef shares with audiences his love of food and portrays a truthful glimpse into his battle with cancer. And, whereas his appreciation and love of food are evident in all his projects, including his line of signature spice blends, and, whereas it is abundantly fitting and proper that Mr. Rufert's gastro and gastronomical genius and devotion to uplifting the lives of others through food be appropriately recognized. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Georgia House of Representatives that the members of this body commend Mr. Hans Rufert for his incredible career as a chef, writer, and culinary television star. Be it further resolved that the clerk of the House of Representatives is authorized and directed to transmit an appropriate copy of this resolution to Mr. Hans Rufert.
This was read and adopted in the Georgia House of Representatives on March the 30th, 2009, certified and sealed by Robert E. Rivers, Jr., clerk of the Georgia House of Representatives. That's beautiful. These don't come along no, every day. No, thank that you is so much. amazing. That is thank amazing. You, thank you, thank you. And, and this little ribbon, it's called a pretty... Not every resolution that they prepare has the Georgia seal and the ribbon on it, and they refer to this as a pretty copy. It is an unusual size. I made four stops last night looking for a frame. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I'll find a frame. <laughs> it, it's beautiful. And Bannon County will have to frame this. But I thought we could much. find that. But you should be very, very I honored and pleased. And we well, all love you, you dearly. You, you mean so much to this community. You mean so much to survivors. And there are survivors among us every single day. One of the things we did when we fixed the motorhome, when North Georgia Now today decided we would be touring, we put faces on the motorhome. We want you to know who we are. If you pull up my red light, we want you to blow your horn, wave at us, hang out with us. Hans' faces on the motorhome. The one thing I'm going to add is friends don't let friends fight cancer alone. Every single person in this room has been affected by somebody with That's cancer. Right. When I came down with skin cancer, my mom died of melanoma. I was very, very I was scared, but I was prepared because I was ready to fight sure. a battle because I watched you, and you taught me so, so much. You taught me about eating, you taught me about living, and you taught me not to give up. The day you left for MD Anderson, to be quite honest with you, and you know this to be the truth, I went home, jerked out my third drawer to see if I had black pantyhose. I thought I would be at your funeral the next week. That's funny, but it's not funny. It is not <laughs> funny. It is not funny, but a miracle happened, and we know that through prayer, now this community, we are serving Fannin, Pickens, Polk, and Cherokee counties with ETC3. Part of the home goes worldwide. Prayers are answered. Every single day, someone prays for you. Every single day, someone calls me and says, how is Hans? Not, hey, Sherry, what you doing? How's Hans? I'm so tired of answering that question. <laughs> Hans, tell us exactly how you're doing today. Well, actually, I'm, do I'm doing fantastic. I have just some residual issues from, I mean, I had, I had 10 lesions in my brain, which, again, they told me I had a 2% chance of surviving the stomach cancer and that there isn't a number small enough to calculate what my odds of surviving this business was. So, you know, it's, it kind of goes without saying that I have some residual issues from that, but all 10 lesions have reduced uh, to, to within about, you know, 2% of what they were. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's just some residual swelling, but otherwise I'm, I'm getting my energy back, I've gained a little weight, and, uh, and I've been cooking again. So that's, mm -hmm. that's the well, most Come here, I'm going to give you some more weight. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Both of us. That's well, right. we, we love you dearly, and today you so is much. about you. We're going to do a spinach salad with a dressing that you've come up with. I used to make juice out of ginger because ginger is a calming effect. Is that correct? That's correct, but it's also uh, antimicrobial, antifungal. I mean, it, it's one of those things that uh, hardly anything can survive in, in ginger, especially like bacteria and viruses and things. So mm -hmm. it's just a great healthy thing to have anyway. And plus, it, it has that invigorating. It makes you, mm -hmm. just, just to smell it even. It's just good. You, absolutely, absolutely. Smells good. Smells good. Well, we're going to do a dressing with ginger, carrots, and what else? Uh, a little garlic, of course, because I, I have to put garlic. Oh, no. In, in that anything. means there'll be no <laughs> sugar at my house. Actually, <laughs> this probably already smells like garlic. This can be oh, yuck. Always, always smell like garlic, but too. Yeah, you do. You are the garlic king. You love are. It. Love now it. we're going to also incorporate some spices. Your dad does um, Cajun Joe. You That's did right. honey, honey, honey buzz. buzz. That's right. Okay. Are any of the spices going to be in the dressing? Not in the dressing, but I think we've okay. got we've got something else in mind for him down the okay. road. Okay. So. Okay. Well, right now we're going to take a break. I want you to sit back and enjoy some wonderful music. I think we're going to go to the Diplomats or the Barker Great. Brothers. Both those groups are going to be featured on today's program because they are live with us here in the audience. Our viewing audience audience enjoys them every week on Heart of the Home and today our studio audience gets to hear them up close and so personal. We'll be right back guys. Okay guys, there is a little bit of my buddy Hans Rufert. We're going to go back to some of Hans Rufert, but I want to share something with y'all. You know, if you think I would like to eat healthy like Hans does, I would like to try those fermented veggies that he does. They sell them in a couple of places. Out of the Blue, up in Blue Ridge, sells them. And then there's a, a natural shop next to where Jasper Banking used to be in that little strip shopping center there. And they have his cheeses, his kraut, and I think they even have the beets that he does because he does this fermented eating because it really works to make your stomach do what it's supposed to do. It's basically supposed to digest our food. He learned the hard way. He learned um, how to eat better, but you know, the cancer that he had had nothing to do with his eating habits. It was just the luck of the draw. We all know that that could happen to any and all of us at any time. So, so sit back now and we're gonna learn a little bit 
Hans loves cooking with carrots. He loves cooking with ginger. And I think this recipe that we're going to do might have a little bit of those in it. Welcome back to Heart of the Home. We are away from home. We are in Fannin County at Town & Country Furniture. Beautiful, beautiful location on the top of the hill just behind the Chamber of Commerce and CVS Drugs. If you can't find this, honey, you don't need to be driving because it's very, very simple. Come up 515. Yep, it's uh, past the regular Blue Ridge exit, so it's uh -huh. just past downtown. It's a two-story building. It's just full of everything. So, Huge. Yeah. Oh, and if you have a cabin, if you're looking for a cabin up here, stop by and see these folks and let them design something for you. This kitchen was totally designed for you, is that correct? Yeah, well, I came in and it was it was semi-designed, but uh, it was it was too high for television, so you couldn't see past the little bar. Actually, uh -huh. that, that original kitchen's back in that corner now, but they have like six or seven kitchens here. So uh -huh. if you think, well, I'd like that, but something different, you can look at all the other kitchens and get an idea. Incredible yeah. facility. We're so fortunate to be here today. Now, we also have a salad here that the Wharf, a restaurant in El that just opened made us. I just called him and I said, look, we're kind of on tight schedule today. We did the morning show right. from 8.30 to 10, then we ran in, grabbed this, and you're going to make me a dressing. I love your carrot bisque. This is so actually very similar to the carrot I'm bisque. I'm a carrot girl, yep. so I think I'm going to like this. Now tell me the ingredients, Hans. All right, so here we go. We're going to do um, some carrots, and normally I would, I would shred them, but I'd, I'm kind of cheating, just using these little, little miniature guys uh -huh. today. And the thing is, when you're making something like this, if you put too much liquid at the beginning, it doesn't have enough friction to really kind of make it a paste. And that's what we want to do is kind of get it nice and, and work together. So I'm going to put my, my chunky ingredients in first, and I've mm -hmm. got some ginger. Of course, ginger comes in a, in a root like this. Let me see that. Yeah, now and I, I purchased this to use in juices. It smells wonderful. Oh, yeah, wonderful. it goes great. Now, when you juice it, I'd leave the skin on because there's I a lot do. of nutrients yeah, in there. But yeah. the, the skin can be Ooh, a little bit fibrous, good. and so mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I, I just took a little bit off. And this also can be kind of spicy. So to, you know, if you want a spicy dressing, put a lot of ginger. If you just want the taste of it, don't put so much. So okay. uh, I kind of want a little bit spicy. So three so, cubes, basically. Yeah, big old chunk. I'm going to put one garlic oh, in there just garlic. for... Oh, garlic. Oh, my goodness. But in a little bit, of course, garlic is, again, it's an antimicrobial, antifungal. It's an extremely healthy food. So um, we're going to put just enough in there to kind of give it some, some oomph, but not okay. enough to make it offensive. You might have a little bit of garlic breath for it. Yeah, all, not me, because I'm not going to taste this stuff. So... <laughs> <laughs> I got a new life going on. Right. I don't want to smell like garlic. <laughs> is that sea salt? That's sea salt, and okay. then a good drizzle of honey, and then I'm going to put just honey a little... Honey is also a great ingredient. You use it that is. a lot, don't you? Honey is one of the... In fact, I think it's the only food that never spoils, mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that is a key to its health properties because, again, nothing can grow in it because it's got these great anti um, antibacterial right. qualities to it. And I notice you're using our local honey. Yeah, Ball Ground, Georgia. Any, anytime ball I can Ground, use Georgia. Local. Hey, Ball Ground, we and, love And there is a, there's a big theory and, and a lot of evidence to support that eating local honey, especially in in its raw form like that helps against local allergies. So mm -hmm. if you're allergic, if, if the bees are getting the wildflowers, right. they're, they're kind of sort of indoctrinating into you the, that pollen, mm -hmm. and so it's not as, uh, mm -hmm. you know, reactive. And I'm allergic to everything. Well, so. hopefully that'll, that'll help. So uh, I'm going to start liquid wine with carrot juice, and of course okay. you, can, you can make this on your own or you can buy it bottled, okay. and that's nothing else but carrot juice. And so that's going to be our, our liquid to get this going. Now as this goes, and it's going to make a lot of noise, I'll tell you ahead of time. So as this goes, I'll start drizzling some olive oil in there. It'll kind of emulsify it and make it mm -hmm. that kind of nice, you know, dressing, you want to have that nice mouthfeel to it. Right. Uh, and then I'll put a little bit of rice vinegar or even cider vinegar um, just to kind of give a little bit of a, a punch. So let's okay. get this going. I'll try not to, to, to splash. It's kind of like at SeaWorld, the front row might get a little oh, wet. Gosh. You know. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Beautiful color. I about to say, the color is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And um, if you can find turmeric root, which is in the ginger family, but it's bright, bright yellow, mm -hmm. a little fresh turmeric root, again, it's another anti-cancer, it's an anti-tumor, uh, and it also kind of gives it a nice, I hate to use the word bitter, but it's, it's a good bitter. You okay. know, I think we kind of get afraid of the word bitter, but it's, if used the right way, it's, it's really good. Now, let me good. ask you about something. When you make your carrot this, did you use some sour cream in it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Heavy whipping cream? No, not, not as much, but I uh, do Man, a little sour cream. Man, that soup is good, and it, this reminds me of it so much. All right, just a little bit of rice finger. And again, okay. you can adjust this any way you like, yeah. but I don't want to overpower the, the sweetness of the, the carrot, because carrots on their own, even without the honey, are just mm -hmm. tremendously sweet. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you've had carrot juice oh, before. Oh, yeah. Well, I went on a carrot diet one time, and I turned orange. Oh, did oh, I turn you can. orange? I and did. you can, absolutely. I did. Yeah, I've never had a tan, but I have had orange. That's a good consistency. Now, Let we me... want to put a little bit of that on here? Yeah, actually, I want to kind of taste it for seasoning. Excuse me for okay. using my, my finger, but... Uh, what is the chef's best friend? That's my favorite tool right that's there. It. That's it. Right. That's no, it. I think that's that's great. So is let that me good? Okay. Hand me it, that. I do. I do smell the garlic. But it's, again, it's just enough to kind of kind of tie everything together. It's not uh -huh. enough to make anybody uh, walk away with you know 
Right. Losing any friends. It's not ramps. No. You know, no. So. Oh, let's talk about ramps. Now, Hans Kirk's The South is going to start airing soon. Let's it talk starts about uh, that. June the 20th, and it's um, 13 shows that we did really about Georgia agriculture. And so mm -hmm. uh, I really kind of wanted to tell the story of, of kind of the way that Georgia food progresses. So we started up here um, in Bannon County. Uh, I forgot the name of the, the park, but uh, way up in the mountains anyway, found ramps. And then we went to Athens for asparagus. And then we went down to Darien, Georgia for shrimp. And so every episode, as they play out, you kind of follow the season of Georgia food. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was kind of interesting to me because I didn't know so many of those things that were grown in Georgia, like fresh uh, mussels uh, and clams. We mm -hmm. grew off the coast of Darien. I didn't even know we had an industry for that. I thought that was only cold water. And soft shell crabs and, uh, again, the white shrimp, which uh, Georgia, shrimping in, in general has a bad rap for killing what they call bycatch, like they catch too many other things other than mm -hmm. shrimp. But Georgia has pioneered the way of how to eliminate a lot of that bycatch. So we sort of lead the country in, in the, the sort of most green way of catching shrimp. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of those kind of information. And of course, in every show I do, I always try to incorporate those little health tidbits in there right. as well, because I feel like if I'm, if I'm over the top healthy, people will turn a channel. Mm -hmm. There's that healthy guy again. But I feel if I kind of get people excited about the food right. and then kind of sneak in the healthy bits or whatever, then they'll incorporate that into their diet. Well, so. this, this salad includes two of my favorite ingredients. It has apples and it has craisins. Now, when I do chicken salad, mm -hmm. I put craisins in it. Craisins are my thing. So um, this is gonna be a good salad. It's gonna be good for you. We're going to spend some time with an audience member because we're going to let somebody come up sure. and taste this. So we're going to take a break right now and we're going to go to some music. The music will probably be the Barker Brothers. They have a new song and Angela Barker wrote this song. She, she's written several lately. She is also responsible for the theme song, A Part of the Home. And I know if you're standing in your kitchen cooking and you hear that theme song, you know it's time to run to your TV, hit that DVR and record Heart of the Home. If you'd like to join us in a live studio audience, we'll be doing this again in the near future. We welcome you to email us and tell us you'd like to get on board. We will be traveling in our motor home. You will get to travel a little bit with us. No, we want to take you out and do I some meet to. and greets. We are all about you. So please share your recipes with us. Please share your thoughts. And in just a minute, we're going to come back and see what you think of the Barker Brothers' new song. Yay! Okay, we're going back to a little bit more of our time with Hans Rufert. Such fun, such great memories, so much fun traveling, doing those live events. I loved when we got to do the live shows and y'all were out there. And I'm not sure if we have any shots of the audience that day, but we had a, a fun-filled day. The audience was there and so many of them have gone on to be with the Lord. I was thinking about that the other day because I was watching. I'm very fortunate because I have DVDs and DVDs and DVDs of y'all and I have things, places we've been. I found something that we did up at Fields in the Wood the other day and I was looking at all the people standing there. I'm so blessed because y'all have been a part of my life. You have been there when I needed you. You have been there. When we did the friend raiser for Hans Rufert, we packed out the Methodist Church at Jasper. It was standing room only. We did a great event, a concert. We had all the groups came and donated their time. We sold Eat Like There's No Tomorrow t-shirts. We sold his cookbooks and y'all were a big part of that. And each and every one of you today, I know that you have a prayer you'd like to say for Hans. You'd like to you know, encourage the next 15 years to be as, as good as these years have been. He's gone through some struggles. He has gone through the emotional distress of losing his family restaurant to no fault of his own. You know, so many things happen that he just couldn't control. If you're laying in MD Anderson fighting for your life, there are a lot of things you can't control. And I think he taught me so much about living. We are not guaranteed that next moment. And so we have to make the most of every single moment. When I call him and talk to him, I'm gonna sneeze y'all. I can hear happiness in his voice. When I call him and talk to him, if I'm having a down day, he lifts my spirits because he doesn't give up. He doesn't quit, he doesn't end it. He just keeps on trucking along. And it just absolutely blows my mind. When we went through this period of time that we were trying to raise some money for him selling lemon pies, y'all would not believe how many lemon pies we sold. And it was so much fun. And everybody was so excited to be able to help. That's what it's about. It's about helping each other, being there for each other, and lifting each other's spirits. And sometimes the only thing you can do is pray for somebody. And so as we approach Han's birthday coming up and his date of 15 years cancer free say a prayer that the next 15 years will be just as good as these now we're going back to a little bit more of heart of the home welcome back i know you love that awesome awesome music you know we are about friends fellowship and food 
I just brought my daughter Angela on board because this smells phenomenal. It also has a little kick, a little garlic going on. We chose somebody out of our audience who I know loves garlic. I sit next to her at lunch every day, guys. She about kills me. She's the garlic queen. Actually, yeah. That's she been true is a few the days. garlic queen. She is also my co host on North Georgia Now Today on Fridays. She is. Hope no blondes are here that would get mad. She's the ditzy one because she is biologically a blonde and she dyes her hair to, so you won't know that. Yeah, until I she, open my mouth. She does. Sometimes she does appear a little vague, a little distant. A little vague. But she is my firstborn child. It's all in fun. It is all in fun. We have so much fun. We make fun of ourselves. And I said, that's the coolest thing about mm -hmm. our morning jobs. We can make fun of ourselves. We can laugh. We can. You know, if I fall out of the chair, we call Clark's towing. It just Are you going to tell them it's amazing I am still alive, though, after you went to Alaska and I cooked the garlic in the shop? She did, y'all. She <laughs> she took a huge elephant bowl garlic yes. and cooked it in the my whole forest. Thing, the whole thing. The whole thing. Two of them, actually. I was on the road for about nine days with Fred yes. and the crew. We came back in from shooting some shows in Alaska. I opened my office door and the smell of garlic almost killed me. And it had been four days since we cooked it. Four days. I called she in. I called my secretary in. I said, what happened in my building while I was gone? They said, what happens in Jasper stays in Jasper. They had and cooked it was one fantastic. huge. We cooked two. And then we no wonder that we squeezed them so out, you know. Well, yeah, it's nice and, and salt. We made, and we just did crusty bread. And that's what we had for lunch that day. I and know. Afternoon <laughs> snack. I know. And... <laughs> And it had been four days, so we thought we were safe. You were not you safe. Came back. Now, I want you to try this. You okay. love salads. Yes. You love garlic. You mm -hmm. love the combination of the ingredients he used. Yes. Tell me what you think. I can't wait. But don't talk with your mouth full. Mm -mm. No, go ahead. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Is it good? Oh, it's delicious. But like I said, you could spike it a little more with ginger if the you like it. Like it's so ginger. subtle. Yeah, absolutely. Even though you have the fragrance. Yeah. Good. And it's the mm. health properties of the garlic in there too. Right. So it also kind of helps it's bind the thing a little bit. Y'all be jealous because it is really well, there's good. Plenty more we and can. we have to say this salad did come the the Wharf Restaurant, right. a new place mm -hmm. in LJ, provided this for us. They have two people can eat for twenty dollars mm. or less. It is awesome. They have good, good salads. Good. Mm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Tell me what you think. Would you change anything about this? Yes, I need bread to dip in it. <laughs> it would be good to dip it too. Okay. But like I said, that would make a good cold soup too. If you go like a little bit of cold sour cream or even some men chopped them in there mm -hmm. too. So it's mm -hmm. it's a good base. And a lot of the things that that, oh. that I do or that I learned growing up at the Woodbridge too is sometimes you make things that are then sort of uh, customizable. So if, mm -hmm. if I wanted to make that a soup, it's easier to do. If I wanted to make it, if I omit the garlic, you could actually make this in almost like a dessert soup again with mm -hmm. mint or with, uh, with right. a little more honey. So I would you add nutmeg tunkiness. to that? You could a little nutmeg or even mm -hmm. now the, the the bisque that you like when I, I used right. to make whatever you usually had. A little bit of, uh, of course, ginger was was very prominent in there too, mm -hmm. but also cardamom. And cardamom is a is a sort of an Indian spice that people don't really know much about, but it's got that Love sort of floral. Of you know, it's yeah. got a little, not rose, but again, sort of a floral note to it. And mm -hmm. in combination with ginger, it's just a beautiful match. So mm -hmm. it works it's really good. the the texture too, because it's chunky with the carrot. Right. Yeah, so I wanted to leave the fiber in there, too. it sticks to the yeah. salad better than yeah. actually a runny dressing, and I, I love this. No. And it has to be good for you. No, absolutely. There's, there's nothing. I mean, mm -hmm. the uh, I've, I've kind of mentioned that in my cookbook, too, that my dad always taught me that you can't make chicken salad out of chicken poop. He know? did, but so, his dad did not say no, chicken poop, guys, poop. guys, but we're on Christian Network, yeah, so right. chicken poop. It also had four <laughs> letters, but... Uh, <laughs> That's but right. again, mm -hmm. there was there was nothing on its own that's bad, and so when you put them in combination, it's not bad either, you know. But at the same time, you have to kind of know when to stop. I mean, it's just like if you're painting, you have all these beautiful colors, and mm -hmm. if you mix them all together, it makes kind of mud, you right, know. So right. you, if you go too far, it, it can get it can get kind of blah. Mm -hmm. But if you if you keep it simple and the sort of keep it simple and stupid thing, uh, mm -hmm. there's nothing hard about that, and there's nothing there's nothing uh, there's no bad ingredients in there. I'm going to ask you a bad word. I love blue plate mayonnaise. Yeah. Now I like creamy dressings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I took two tablespoons of blue plate mayonnaise. Oh. Fine. And whisk that into that. Would it destroy the value? No, no, of no. It? no. And okay. you know, the mayonnaise is actually on its own. Of course, it's, it's high in saturated fat. But if, if you're looking at a jar of mayonnaise, as long as it doesn't have hydrogenated oil, you're fine. If it's mm -hmm. just if it's just eggs and oil and vinegar and maybe a tiny little bit of turmeric or whatever, that's that's fine. Okay. Once you start, if, if there are things on the label of mayonnaise that you can't pronounce, mm -hmm. then then mm -hmm. it's bad for you're you. You're in trouble. But okay. the mayonnaise on its own, anything in moderation like that is is, is totally fine.
one. Mm -hmm. Well, this is an incredible salad. I, I can it smell it. So I didn't good. taste it, but it, it smells wonderful. You need to taste it. Just is this the carrot in your mouth. Can we do this recipe on my website? Absolutely. Well, okay. You, uh, somebody pay attention to how much I put a wood in there. Well, pay attention <laughs> because Hans, like me, does not measure. You know, but some the best crazy cooks person. Are that way. No, yeah. some crazy person bought me measuring spoons. I don't know why they did that. Right. This is going to be on the Heart of the Home website. Check us out at www.heartofthehomerecipes.com. We add recipes, we take away recipes. If you have new recipes you'd like to share with us, please get in touch with us at our website. Check us out daily. We get hits from all Wow. You know, um, seeing that, seeing my beautiful daughter, seeing that gorgeous smile, when you think about it looked like life was all in order and life was in order and then things began to happen and um, sadly she ended her life and as I look at those smiles the shirt that she had on that day I have actually hanging in my bedroom beside my door just beside my bed I don't know why but I still have that shirt I don't know what I'm gonna do with it because obviously she'll never need it again but she loved doing television. She loved coming out to see y'all. She loved your smile, she loved your hugs. When she started to battle cancer, so many of y'all were a big part of how she made it through those, those horrific days. And um, you were there for her benefit, you were there to encourage her, you were there to pray for her. And at the end, um, tragically, she ended her life due to suicide. This week we've been talking a lot about military and soldiers and um, tomorrow we're gonna talk to a, a lady who does dog therapy for soldiers coming home. Many of them have issues, many of them are depressed, many of them have been traumatized. On Thursday we're gonna talk to a man who has done three tours of duty in Iraq. And when you think about, he came home, he's a very successful businessman, he's a really, really smart, straight up guy. He came through all this. There are some people who can handle the tragedy, the trauma. There are some people who can't. And sadly, my daughter was one of those that she could not handle what was happening around her. She was also prescribed a drug that said may cause suicidal thoughts. When you think about your life and you think about everything you've been through, um, I'm very cautious about pills, prescriptions, anything. I don't take anything stronger than an Advil. I'm very strange about it because I know that mind-altering things do happen. Um, I don't know if that's what caused her to pull the trigger. I don't know if she just couldn't handle anymore. I don't know what that last moment of thought in her life was, but I know that watching these videos and seeing her beautiful, beautiful smile, I know that she loved you. She loved life. She loved each and every one of you who came up to her and said, Ange, we are praying for you. We know you're gonna be fine. And we all assumed that she would be. She is fine today. She is not hurting anymore. She is not battling all the things that were going through her mind with depression. And, and we have learned. But at the same time, we are celebrating our friend Hans. Angela's life took a very different turn. Hans has battled back from any and everything that was thrown at him. We're going to end today with some music. I think this is The Diplomats with Matt Dibler. And so we're going to, we're going to go to that. And I want you all to just sit back. And I want you to think about the different paths we've seen lives take. Angela was full of smiles and full of life. And sadly, she chose the path that ended her life. Hans has never, ever given up. He has been a pillar of strength for so many people. And he will come and talk to you. He will share his message with you. And that's what he's about. He's about helping somebody else. So sit back and enjoy a little music from The Diplomats. As the world looks upon me As I struggle along And they say I have nothing But they are so wrong In my heart I'm rejoicing how I wish they could see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me. I've a good place to sleep. There's food on my table shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. 
Now I know I'm not wealthy. These clothes are... Yay. Heart of the Home, one of the most fun, greatest times of my life. We traveled. We had so much fun. We did programs in Alaska. We did pro programs up in Tennessee in the mountains. We did programs down at Butts Mill Farm in Georgia. We traveled and we had so much fun sharing your recipes. Um, also, once I started producing cookbooks, I found that it wasn't just the recipes of the cookbook, she wanted to hear some stories. And so I'm working on a new cookbook and it's gonna have all the same recipes we had before with additions that I've accumulated from my viewers. Y'all have been great, you've sent me great recipes. Some of them I haven't tested yet, I'm gonna do that. I have one that I can't wait, wait to try because I love coconut and it is loaded with coconut. So I'm gonna try that. But I am gonna produce a new cookbook and it's gonna be just like the last one. It's gonna have pages that honor people. You know, in the last Heart of the Home cookbook I did, we honored Brady Singleton, we honored Joe McCutcheon, we honored Miss Farrell Starnes, we honored my daughter Angela. We honored people who truly made a difference in our lives. We're gonna be honoring so many people who have now made such a huge difference in my life because I've come from the deep depression I found myself in. And um, I didn't understand depression. I didn't understand why people just couldn't suck it up buttercup and go on. You know, why, why can't you just live life? Why couldn't my daughter live her life? Why did she have to end her life? There are some people who just can't handle what life throws at you, but we know somebody who can. Hans Rufert has handled it all. He has been up against it. He has been slapped in the mouth. He has been knocked down thrown under the bus, you name it, and it has happened to this kid, but he came out of it, and I think he, he just amazes me. So I hope that you will tell your friends, tell your neighbors, we will re-air this program tonight at six o'clock, then we will download it to YouTube. And remember, we have two channels on YouTube, Sherry Martin 2009, if you type that in, or just Sherry Martin, and it's C-H-E-R-I-E, and no, I'm not that crazy drunk lady who is out somewhere in Seattle or somewhere dancing and acting crazy. There's a lot of Sherry's who spell their name like me. So so that was kind of, uh, when I saw that, I was like, oh no, that's not me. Oh no, that's not me. That's not me. So um, you might see me drinking a half and half tea with some lemon, but that's about as wild as I get. So, but again, check out our YouTubes and this one will be downloaded and you'll get to share. Please share it with your friends and neighbors. Share it with somebody who knew Hans and maybe has moved away. Share it with somebody who doesn't realize that it has been 15 years since this kid was said, oh, you are cancer free. Can you imagine hearing those words? And now 15 years later, I would like to have a number of the lives that he has touched, the people that he has helped, the people that he has taken the time to reach out to. And he, he really didn't have the time, but he has done it. He is an amazing young man. He is now, consulting by um, helping us all to eat a little bit healthier. He has gotten me to a point that I can eat a kale salad, which is pretty cool. And he has gotten me to a point that my favorite food is lobster with nothing but fresh stuff thrown in there with it. It is amazing what he has done to change the lives of people around him. So please continue to support him. Go check out his blog, check out his Facebook page. And again, on July the 13th, send him a happy birthday wish because this is a birthday that the doctor said would never happen. He had like a 1% chance of survival and he made it. He absolutely made it and he has, he has lived an amazing life giving back to others and um, yeah, things were taken from him, things went crazy, things didn't go the way he thought they would and then all of a sudden, he's smiling again. So you just have to support somebody who gets knocked down, drug out, and comes right back at it. So thank you again for being with us today. I hope that you will tune in again, again tonight. And don't forget, you can check out a lot of our programs that are on YouTube, Sherry Dobbs Martin on Facebook, or Sherry Martin 2009 on YouTube. I'll see you again soon, only on ETC.